Right. Oh. Us. Us. I hope everyone's well. Um, as always, a very special guest uh, on the Kyokushin Shuffle. Uh, here we have this uh, this afternoon. I have the honour in talking to Shian Peter Volke here from uh, out of Haddon, out of Victoria, just uh, just outside of Ballarat. Shian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for um, you know having a chat to me on social media, and and we've got each other finally. Thank you for that. How are you? Us, Pat, I'm I'm absolutely great. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity of having me on your uh, on your program here, and it's uh, it's a, it's a great honour to be here. Thank you. Uh, good on you. Thanks for that. And um, you know, we just had a brief chat then, and uh, you know, yeah, the yeah the social media and yeah the internet and um, the pace at what things are going at the minute. Um, but like you just gestured, you you're not far off uh, from your potential retirement, so you'll be spending a lot more time by the sounds of it hopefully in in the dojo is that correct yeah look that, that that's correct pat i um i sort of started my journey in the martial arts in 68 i started in judo in the ymca in geelong and i heard about kyokushin uh from one of the other uh, guys i was training with and uh late in 1970 i uh, i stepped into the international school of self-defense which was run uh, by Bill Power, uh, a Dutchman who uh, had a background in jiu-jitsu. And uh, we had uh, Kato uh, Sensei, who uh, Ivan Zevachanos brought down from uh, Japan. Uh, I think um, wow. Ivan met um, Sosei, to uh, best of my recollection, down in um, when he was uh, training the Kodakan. And I guess they formed a relationship and... Uh, as a consequence of that, um, Cato uh, uh, came down and taught uh, self-defence, I think, at the Yellow Cab Company. And also he um, yeah. uh, introduced um, uh, Kyokushin to Australia uh, um, you know, back in the pioneering yeah. era where guys like um, uh, Billy Powell, um, Hunchy Emin and, uh, and uh, their contemporaries, so I guess yeah. they were the pioneers of the style in Australia. And I was... Um, uh, consider myself very fortunate having yeah. trained with these gentlemen and these pioneers, and it's uh, it's been a passion for myself ever since. Well, that's amazing. So, can we celebrate as such? Is, is it your fiftieth year? To and I'm sorry, I didn't ask beforehand, but is it probably maybe a little bit more that you've been in Kyokushin? Uh, no, it's been it's been fifty years. Um, fifty years this year, Pat. Uh, in, in September, I think, to the best of my recollection. Yeah, yeah. Recollection. Well, well, congratulations! What a what a what an amazing achievement. Uh, look, look at uh, it's been a great journey, and looking back on it, I've certainly um, uh, enjoyed it immensely, and I continue to do so. It's given me some really fantastic opportunities, not just in. Um, uh, my personal development, but I've made a, a lot of really good friends, and, and I can honestly say there's um, uh, been very few people on a personal level that I've not gotten along with. You know, you may yeah. have uh, uh, situations arriving where you know you have different views in in terms of politics or organisation or structure, but if you speak to the people one to one and uh, uh, they've all been fantastic, and and I think we 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 really um, uh, enjoy a joint passion, which, uh, which which makes the journey really really worthwhile. Yeah, indeed, uh, Xian. So you 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 started with a bit of judo, but then what was the catch of Kyokushin for you? What was the uh, actual moment as such? Towards was it a technique? Was it something that was it the contact side? What was it? Uh, it was the. Um... I was addicted the first time I watched a class. To be honest, I, I just. Uh... Uh, a hopeless case. The, the first class I saw, I uh, I had to join. Back in those days, I was a school kid and I didn't have much money. So yeah. uh, my instructor uh, was very good to me. He uh, let me clean the dojo uh, in exchange for training. I remember um, I had uh, uh, two in, two instructors uh, for the most part. Uh, uh, Mervyn Nellis, uh, Hunchy, who, who runs... Uh, his own organisation, the Zenshin, and uh, my main instructor would have been Brian Cole on the karate side of things. They're both uh, mm. absolute gentlemen and absolute, uh, I guess, I was very fortunate to train under both of them, especially uh, Brian Cole. He was um, he was the one that uh, I sort of clicked with. We all, we all have um, 
I had the opportunity to train with some absolutely brilliant instructors, but he was, um, to me, very inspirational, not just as a, um, a karateka, but also as a man. Yeah, uh, sure. He had uh, uh, a very good character. He had a humble demeanour. And, uh, you know, for a guy that was um, half my size, even when I was in my, uh, I guess, early to mid-20s, he had no trouble uh, handling me, much to my <laughs> embarrassment, you know, I was sort of a fairly uh, big sort of a guy, about 6'3", and um, pushing 100 kilo, and uh, just his counterfighting style and his... Um, yeah. uh, the way the way he moved and handled himself was uh, something that taught me a lot, I guess. Ah, uh, very good. So you uh, you know you're in your were you in your mid teens or yeah like tw late twenty or uh, sorry early twenties around then? Uh, early, early well I I I stayed with him until my uh, I suppose mid twenties. He retired after uh, ten years with a, yeah. with the shoulder injury, which made it difficult for him to go on. But uh, I was very uh, very fortunate Go going back to I still remember. Uh, my first instructor uh, in, in that time was being also Mervyn Ellison. He was um, kind enough to give me an old gi of his. And I, and I thought, wow. I sort of met, I had, um, you know, snippers of kindness all the way through, yeah. which, showed, which showed what the people were like. And that, mm -hmm. and that had a great uh, impact on me as well. I, could, I remember um, the owner of the school, Billy Power, he could be an absolute ruthless businessman, but if you... Uh, if if he saw you needed help, he'd do anything for you. You know, he was he, he had a really good good heart. And um, I know I'm jumping from uh, no one one thing to the other here, Pat. I apologise no, for that, no, but no, just and it, it, it it's fascinating to hear. And I and again, in not preparing questions for certain you know legends like yourself, it's because it's it's really cool to see the the history come out. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, when was that? When was this? And it's it's it, it's a good thing to do, you know. It's it's it, it progresses yeah. with it as we go. So, with with that being said, you uh, obviously you know met some amazing people to begin with, and without that, like you're gesturing, you know, the journey as such could have gone left or right, you know. So, you you had this uh, amazing um, you know instructors around you. So, from there, were you? I always gesture as such, you know the. The, uh, the the black belt mysticness in the 70s would have been such an amazing thing you know and you know very rare as such you know was that something that you that eluded you or was it something that well, you well, yeah it was um it was a, just a black belt in those days was not just a rare beast but it was almost a mystical beast yeah and um that's a good one and you and you're absolutely right in jogging my memory in that regard because anybody that had a black belt really really stood out yeah uh in those days, uh, I think if you were a green belt back then, you had a similar type of uh, status as a black belt. Yeah. Well, these days, perhaps, you know, <laughs> and, and really so that they did uh, stand out. A lot of the uh, the early uh, black belts in Kyokushin were guys that transferred, like um, Bill Power, for instance, was a very good jiu-jitsu man. There's a Dutchman who had a very, very switched-on guy. He, he had a background in judo and jiu-jitsu and he's very, very good at that. And uh, through his introduction, uh, through Kato Sensei, uh, uh, he was introduced to karate as well. And although that wasn't his uh, first passion or first love, he, he certainly um, uh, uh, spread it magnificently. Mm -hmm. uh, my instructor, uh, Brian Cole and guys like uh, Frankie Everett and that, they um, had a background in boxing. Mm -hmm. and they were also... Uh, I guess transitioned very well into karate and had had, had an idea of the um, uh, I guess the the combat yeah. uh, had a move in combat and things like that so that that helped them um, a hell of a lot I know my Brian my instructor Brian Cole because of his background in boxing uh, did very very well in karate he um, handled himself. Uh, very well, even as a, a lower grade, and um, took to it like um, a duck to yeah. water. And I was very fortunate. The school that I went to um, uh, taught, taught me, I guess, jujitsu, um, wow. karate, and, and boxing. So mixed mixed martial arts to me was a very very natural natural progression. Uh, when I was brown belt, the owner of the school um, offered me a full time position. Oh, wow. uh, in teaching and training, and um, absolutely jumped at that chance. I thought <laughs> it was, uh, I thought it was the Anne's pants. Yeah, know, just, yeah. To, just just to be able to do that was 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 fantastic. 
uh, karate training back then was a lot uh, different from now in that when I first started, we did the head punches. They were with control, but, you know, blood and noses and things like that uh, uh, weren't, weren't unusual, although it was, it was not meant as part of it. And also because Kato had a, um, uh, a strong influence in our dojo and uh, he was a smaller man, Yep. Uh, he actually used King Gear in his fighting. And as, as you'd be aware, uh, Kyokushin has a background in the Goju system as well as the Shotokan system. So that, in those initial days, that was that was part of it. You know, I was wow. taught to flick out a groin kick and a, and a face punch. Those were the f um, first two weapons that uh, uh, Brian Senpai um, yeah. drilled into me. And, yeah. I, and, and I was always um, very interested in the practical side of karate. To me, tournament fighting was a secondary okay. interest. It's something I did because uh, it was something I wanted to experience. But um, uh, when I was young, uh, I did a lot of security work for probably yeah. 18 to 20 years. And, this, uh, and, I, and I wanted the karate I had to be practical. Yes. Uh, I mean, there was, there's two ways uh, to... to um, aspects to karate in my thinking uh, kyokushin is um, is a buddha system in in as much as that it's a self-development vehicle i, yes. I believe it uh, uh, has uh, value throughout your life in terms of uh, what sort of a man you want to be or what sort of a woman uh, yes. you want to be so there's there's that part of it in terms of uh, developing your character and, and, and your development as a person there's also the practical aspect of it uh, you know, is it going to be uh, useful as a fighting system? I mean, there's a lot of very good martial arts out there which have perhaps limited value as fighting systems, but they're good uh, self-development yep. vehicles. To me, um, Kyokushin uh, had both. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you realise too when you're developing some of the carters that, um, you know, there's grapplings there, there's, there's mm. choke holds there, there's groundwork there. And uh, if you look at judo and jujitsu, they'll start off with the grappling and later on in their syllabus, they've got the strikes. So yeah, a lot of good true. martial arts will, will, will have it all there. You know, it's all there. I'm, I'm very reluctant to say one's better than the other. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, but you're gesturing it perfectly because that is, for, for, the, for the young bucks as such, you know, we are here, we are, you know, commonly hear that it's, it's all in there. It's all in there. Yep. Yes, there's three books attached to this beautiful style, you know, that, that reference to that, to that sixties and seventies of when Masayama was putting it out and promoting it. But, you know, um, some of the Shians have even gestured that a whole, you know, a lot of the components in those books were a lot of it to do with, you know, grappling takedown, um, that, that form of self-defense way before Kumite. That, that, that's correct. And, and back in the, in, in the earlier times, uh, uh, the system we employed now was was nowhere near as polished as it is. It was a lot um, different. E even when um, uh, the full contact rules initially came out, you know, I, I remember things like one of my favourite techniques was grabbing the head and kneeing to the face. You know, it suited my build and height sure. because I didn't I didn't have nice roundhouse kicks. That was one way for me to get a, mm. a head shot in without face punching. Mm. Uh, but later on, that was uh, that was uh, eliminated. Uh, Eliminated, much to my disgust, but yeah. uh, you know that's uh, that that's that's how things go, and um, uh, so you've you've got to, uh, I guess, look at the safety aspects of the pat and things like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, because what we do doesn't um, doesn't have gloves and and things mm. like that. There's, there's certain um, certain formats that make it untenable, and I think too that uh, uh, an honest opinion on my part would be that uh, the Japanese had a look at the rules uh, <laughs> as well. And they sort of thought, well, this is going to suit a Japanese physique better than a Western physique right. as well. And uh, yeah. uh, some people will agree with what, with what I say and some people will not agree. With I know that what was, you're saying. I know what that, you're was, that, that was my, that was my take on it, especially back in the earlier days when the Westerners mm. that I came in contact with it, had a lot of background in boxing and our, and our punching skills were more developed now. Kicking skills, whereas, you know, we got some horrible shocks. I remember the first Japanese instructor I personally trained with, Higashi Tani Senpai, uh, in terms of his kicking technique, he went through the whole dojo like a, 
hot knife through butter <laughs> because, you know, you, you got hit with a low kick, which I'd never seen before. And before you knew it, this foot was sitting in your ear. Yeah. And you sort of sitting on your backside just wondering what happened. And because this was... Um, yeah. It's something we we simply never we'd never seen before, and certainly not the the speed and uh, mm. accuracy uh, which was inherent. And after after a while, you got used to it, and you say so you learn to deal with it. But uh, <laughs> boy, geez, it was a shock to the system the first time you saw it. I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, that was there. Yeah, that would have been. And, and I guess in, in segue of some of the you know fortunate um, Japanese that came to Australia, how, and I, I, I gesture it politely in, in that it was probably mid seventies, late seventies. Were you a part of any international trips? Was this something on the radar then, or were you working uh, towards uh, black it, and then it went from there? It was, um, the way it sort of worked, there was initially two organizations, uh, uh, Ivan Sevacharnos, um, Hunchy and uh, John Taylor, at that stage, I was with uh, obviously with Ivan's organisation because it started off through Bill on that. But um, uh, there was a selection process in terms of the, uh, uh, I think it was the second world tournament, which um, uh, I was selected from Ivan's organisation, and uh, and uh, then um, uh, John Taylor had some selections from his organisation, and because of. Uh, uh, political positioning, uh, John Taylor's organisation got all the tickets. So that's, uh, uh, that gotcha. was one of the things that was um, uh, disappointing in a way, but I mean, that really, that, that that's life. And uh, okay. uh, I wasn't in a strong financial position back in those days. So just sure. sort of fund myself uh, was, was, was not really an option at that particular stage, yeah. but yeah. It, it had an effect on me in, in later life that it, I always thought that if I was ever in a position of um, authority or power or whatever you want to call it, sure. uh, any, any anybody that was with our organisation uh, would would be funded and they wouldn't miss out due to lack of money. And uh, oh, well done. And, I've, and we we even organisation I won't say I, but we even organisation have certainly held true to that. And um, uh, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's something if you can help people, yeah, because you know, it can can have an impact on their lives. Do it, you know. Oh, of course. No, that, oh, that's that's very good. And <clears throat> in saying that, do you, where you know you missed out as such, and that in that uh, chance to go over, when when did you go over? Did you get a chance, or when was the first time you ventured into the the motherland, as they call it, the, the, in Japan? Oh, yeah, I, oh, it would have been. Um, Fairly late uh, would have been in the in the 90s that I, I trained okay. in Japan. I had I had a lot of um, Japanese instructors, but they were resident. You know that uh, yeah, I sure. trained with uh, Kaneko Senpai, Gashitani Senpai, uh, Takiyama Senpai. Wow! Uh, and uh, probably the the one I got along with the most was uh, Ishishiya, and he was an absolutely fantastic guy. He was um, yeah. Uh, a really good human being, an excellent instructor, a good role model, and uh, probably uh, very much responsible for uh, my looking or um, yeah, my, my taking the position as um, South Pacific representative for Shinkyokushin in, in, in Australia. It's not something that I personally had an interest in pursuing. Sure, sure. Um, um, it's it's probably not my nature so much, but he he kept pushing me to take take that okay. position on, and uh, and and I guess I did, and and it was probably a good thing in many ways because it gave me an opportunity to travel a lot, meet some fantastic people, yeah, and I guess have have uh, some sort of an impact. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, no, good one. Well, there you have it. So so yeah, look, look, what a, what an amazing crew of uh, instructors coming down. Your, you know, rather than having having you go up to Japan as such, a lot of them coming down here and influencing, you know, as such and keeping, uh, I guess, the um, the distance of, you know, again, I have to keep reminding even myself at times, there was no uh, internet, no mobile phones, no laptops as such for <laughs> for you guys. No, no, it was it was a different situation too, and uh, and um, I was married fairly early in life, so um, sure. you know, if you've got uh, three or four kids and things yep. like that, it does, it does limit your op options because you've got to put food on the table, you know. I guess if I got married later, I would have uh, uh, 
uh, probably travelled a bit more in my early life rather than my later life. But uh, once I did travel, I sort of made up for, for lost time. I had numerous trips to Japan and um, yep. I've had opportunities to tra train with some really great instructors, both Japanese and um, also the likes of uh, Shitkin, uh, Fitkin uh, Shian and um, Howard Colin Shian. They, they both um, had a very uh, profound impact I mean, not just in terms of uh, the training and knowledge they um, pass on, but also in terms of um, uh, their personal history because they trained with um, so say in the very, very early days. Yes. And uh, especially in the case of Colin Sheehan, they uh, uh, trained with them a long time, got to know him fairly, mm. fairly well. And so sort of talking to them gave me a, a very good understanding of, uh, I guess, some of the uh, formative days. Yeah, very good. That's cool. So you, um, you know, I, I, we may have skipped a little on the on the showdown side. I always love asking and seeing, you know, the 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 black belt grading and and how you went and how did it go on the day for you and 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 again, you know, what what, what did it mean to you? I think uh, hands down, the black belt was um, the high point of my um, uh, karate career. The, the showdown is really. Uh, the main one, you know, it's um, uh, the training you put in for it, of course, usually because that's when you, your body's young and things like that. You, sure. You'll um, you really push yourself. And it was uh, was was a hard mental struggle. Back in those days, we still had the 40 fights. Okay. Um, and and, and, and al although that was uh, hard, you, it's, it's, it's never ever given to you, probably my... Sh my sh Showdown grading was not as hard as some of the ones I had after that in the fighting aspect. Mm. But I think the, um, although, you know, the last few fights, you get a bit of a hammering and spend a bit of time <laughs> on the floor. Um, the, the, the system we have now, I think is probably a better one as much as that we only have um, 10 fights. Those 10 fights uh, are very hard. All the fights are, Okay. Uh, very hard, and and they're, and and they're more of a test. So I'll probably um, probably my um, third dan, and to some extent my fifth dan grading were the hardest fighting wise. Right. But um, uh, certainly the grading itself, in in all its entirety, and the impact it had on me, I think the um, the showdown was certainly certainly the. Um, one that had the biggest impact, I guess, and the one yeah. that I'll always remember, and the one that's most important. So that's uh, you've just uh, raised something there. So you're via Shin Kyogu Shin, you guys, for your showdown, you know, again on a system of six, seven years consistency, and then and then uh, you grade, uh, you do your black belt grading with ten full contact fights instead of forty now for your group. It, it is, and 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 the way it sort of worked is we'll probably have. Um, two people up to it at a time, sometimes four, sometimes six, if it's a very big grading and they'll have an individual, I guess, uh, judge or referee uh -huh. looking after them. And we match people up uh, with their peer group as much as we can. So if we've got a young, young, yeah. strong fighter, we'll put tournament fighters against them and each fight will be a true test for him. Okay. Like, it's, it's not an ability, um, Speaking for myself, when we had, say, 40 fights, uh, there was probably, there could have been anything of 40 or 50 people back in those days in that grading. So the the entire the entire focus wasn't on you as an individual. Sure. So in the, if you have um, 10 fights, one after the other, and the, there's no place to hide, and they also make a decision each fight. So it's like a mini mini tournament. Yeah. And you, and you know you've got to win yeah, uh, or, or do well in the majority of those fights to to pass your grading. So it's it's a real test each and every time. So very good. The the, the mental um, focus on that is perhaps a bit more yep uh, severe, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in 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 part of you know uh, where you were positioned with Shin Kyoku Shin. That, that started in, uh, well, that group, and correct me if I'm wrong, like mid-90s, mid about mid-90s, oh, mid 96, uh, Yeah, 97? I think uh, uh, the organisation with, yeah, it started in the mid-90s, but uh, the official changeover was 2003. Okay. 
when when the when the name was incorporated and uh, it's made no difference in one way mm -hmm. in that the karate we're doing is the same like i said we're fortunate enough to have some of the best instructors in in the world yeah. as every organization does if don't i don't care which organization it is you will have your uh, uh, fantastic instructors that have a lot to offer. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Of course, I, of course. I, don't, I don't believe it is. Where, where our point of difference would be that the reason we made the change was that um, due to the legal system in Japan, my understanding was that the um, branch chiefs that they had would be recognised, but new ones would not be. Uh, so if, if you got a branch chief under Sose or Yama, you were recognised. But if anyone's happening after that, uh, legally they would not be recognised. So no. we we uh, for that reason we made an, a name change of Shinkyo Hushin or Nukyo Hushin, right? And which gave, I guess, legitimacy to the next generation. Sure. So that and, and that that was the reason for it. But as I said before, as far as an, uh, as far as the karate side of it goes, there's no difference. Yeah. If you trained in my dojo or trained in your dojo, yeah. it'd yeah. be uh, the same in as much as that each instructor is going to have their way of doing things. But the basic structure, of the, the the style will be the same. Where we do differ would be our organisational structure, which is, um, I believe, a very good one. Mm -hmm. As much as it's, uh, it's a very democratic organisation, it's a very well run and well organised organisation in which everybody has input sure. and has opportunity to um, contribute. Yeah, yeah. No, you can see it uh, you know, it's more so with uh, the growth of it, you know, the growth of where, where you know, from then to now, you know, yeah. and that, yeah. that without it, there is uh, there is no growth, obviously. So. And well done there. And, and, and I mean, I've been very fortunate to have competed in a lot of your tournaments and the, and, 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 and the beautiful side of the relationship that Xi'an, Billy, my Xi'an had with a lot of the, you, you know, a lot of guys like yourself was that relationship. And there was no interference as such, or there was no, uh, you know, uh, holding back of, no, he can't compete into this one and, you know, all that. No, you guys have always been fantastic for my development as such because I was always looking forward to going and competing in your tournaments and again back to you know like you said you had a good group good organization that runs consistently those tournaments or the growth and development of Kyokushin and then we we from our side uh, I was always yeah no, there was no doubt I was never going to compete in the Shin Kyokushin so well done there on a personal note back to you and your group. Well look it's um it, it's it's a two-way street, Pat. It's uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's something that's um, how do I say? If, if you if you if you close doors to people, you, you're only robbing your own organisations mm -hmm. in terms of um, having people to find. And Australia's too small. One of the uh, mm -hmm. earlier meetings I remember in in Japan, where 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 they were, you know, uh, looking at perhaps keeping a closed shop and a lot of the countries like Australia and Holland and that, which weren't very big said, look, it's, it's simply not going to work. We're not big enough. You know, it's a, if, if a big country like Japan or back in those days, Hungary or Russia, which had a plethora of dojos, yeah. perhaps yeah. they, perhaps they could be successful and things like that. Um, with, with places like Australia, it's not going to work. And, and my personal opinion is that, I mean, I like guys like Xi'an or Han Xi'an and Xi'an Bill and um, we go back a long yeah, way. Yeah, what, what, what would I want to exclude them? You know, yeah, no, just... no, 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 no. And that's been the cool bit about it. And that's, that, yeah. that's been uh, fantastic. And again, in sharing how you just said the development side, it brought up guys like me because, um, you know, we, we would always compete and, and you'd have, you know, it would be good fun. Um, Xi'an, with uh, that being said, you, you know, you had the, uh, I guess, window there in um your showdown but then does it feel like when you go for second dan third dan fifth dan and to recognize your seventh dan correct that's correct yeah. yeah yeah so how were you seeing or how let, let's play a bit of a, a game in respect of understanding oh wait a second here this is <laughs> this is now getting to 50 years and you know where was it at the 20 year mark you know i'm at 20 year mark and uh, you know, it, it, it just feels so good. It just feels so right. It just, 
Was yeah. that something, you know, in your mid, you know, you got family, Matt, you know, and all the above to also consider how is it playing into the the game of second down, third down, and then your 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 she hunt? Yeah, look, look, all, all the grades tended to be um, a natural progression in that they gave you a target to train for yeah. and, and and a goal to aim for, and that's and that's how I always looked at it. It's an opportunity to train for something and and develop the entirety of your skill. If you look at a tournament, you kind of develop the uh, fighting aspect mm-hmm. of it. Uh, but but not the rest of it. And uh, my view of karate or kyokushin as such has always been it's a holistic thing. And it's not just a holistic thing in terms of my own personal training. It's also a holistic thing in terms of my family involvement. My wife uh, is a fourth dan. She's uh, my my greatest inspiration in a lot of ways and my greatest, uh, how do I say, she pushes me. She pushed me to um, take the plunge to open the dojo right next to my house, you know, I remember training in, uh, with John Jarvis in 1976 in New Zealand. He was the uh, then yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh South Pacific representative and, I, and he built his dojo on top of the house. And I sort of, and I said to myself, oh, well, that's going to be me one day. And my wife was <laughs> with me. She didn't train back then, but she, no, right. she was with me. She said, oh, okay. And um, so when I ummed an hour about the expense of uh, actually doing that. And she said, just, just do it, just do it. Oh, and wow. we did. And that, that, and that was about 20, 21, 22 years ago. And we, we haven't looked back yet. And so, wow. Uh, and, and, and that's been a great thing for me as well in terms of, uh, uh, having her involved in the journey with me and we, mm-hmm. our children have trained in it. And, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's male or female. It's a great thing to, uh, be involved with, you know, just on, on a whole heap of, um, yeah, whole heap of levels, you know, it gets you through the tough times in life and everybody has them. Yeah. And, um, uh, it certainly helps you go through it. And it's getting back to your question on terms of, uh, the different gradings and things like that. Each one, uh, felt really good training for it. And each one felt really good, uh, getting it. Uh, yeah. I, I remember my third day in grading, I spent, probably the last five fights getting up off the floors, but I think I had 15 fights for that. But the guys I fought were all really tough and they could see I was pretty knackered after a, a hard grading and they thought it was Christmas. And so, uh, <laughs> but back then too, you know, if you're at your peak, you don't want it easy. You know, I was a, a big, strong man and I was oh. very fit back then. And, um, I, I didn't want something that was handed to me and it certainly wasn't, mm. you know, and, uh, it, I think it develops develops your character. If you go on, you know, get off of your backside and mm. and just give it all you've got. That that stands you in very good stead as you go through your life. And and the good thing about it is, regardless of what level you're, you're at, uh, you can be pushed. You know, you can be pushed if you're yeah. a 50 or 60 year old. Yeah, yeah. And you and you can be pushed if you're a 30 year old. You know, that's chomping at the bit and yeah. At yeah. the strongest of their lives, so we've all got our, our, uh, I guess, um, areas of growth in there, and that, and that mental area of growth is a really, really, really important one. And a lot of the people that never undergo that sort of uh, physical punishment and pressure, that's something they really miss out on. I'm not saying it's a be all and end all in life, but I, I certainly think it, it can help get oh. you through some really tough times. Fantastic point, Tian, uh, to be honest, that, that uh, again, with most of us going back here in Victoria, back to training, and, and all around Australia that are listening, have all just got their foot back into it. And that's, we're going to have to rehash some, some real important uh, words. And you've, you've spoke, your theme on, on our chat at the minute has inspired me a lot because more so just then the growth side. There's each, each one, each person has a place in Kyokushin as such. And, uh, whether you're 30 or 60 or male or female or a teenager, the growth side of it is the key to to why you're there as such, isn't it? Uh, look, but without a shadow of a doubt, and mm. you find your focus changes as you grow older. Again, you know, when when I was um, mm. uh, probably 35, 36, I was uh, there was the best balance between my physical abilities and my mental ones in terms of being a fighter. I thought that's if I look back on my life, that's where I was my strongest. Sure. And there was a certain focus on it now, you know, now I'm approaching 66 and it's, um, I've had three knee replacements and two hip replacements, which is, um, well, change what I can do, yes, yes, but yes, uh, yes. it hasn't changed my passion and it hasn't right. changed, uh, mm. 
it hasn't changed my love for, for Kyokushin. It just means that I have a personal focus that's slightly different uh, yeah. than it was back then. But I still, you know, I still love my teaching and I still love my training. I mean, I get up at um, five every morning and wow. prior to starting my day, there'd be a minimum of one hour's training uh, before I start my day. I've done, I've done that all my uh, adult mm-hmm. life. And uh, Oh, yeah. It's something that uh, you know to me is better than any uh, pills or yes, 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 I understand. Yeah. Or medicines or whatever. Yeah. No, good point. Uh, Xi'an, you uh, get the illustrious Xi'an title, the, the that that side of it. Now, now you're starting to obviously, you know, get up in respect of like you just said. You know, there's different means and different purpose now. But when you know, again, can you do you remember exactly that or the year that you were uh, a fifth dan when you were awarded your fifth dan? And I'm a little uh, embarrassingly, no, uh, no, that's all right. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to gesture the, the way, uh, again, with you know, Xi'an title, you know, 15 20 years ago, again, was not common. It was, you know, there was not that no, many, no, not that no, many. Uh, no, look, it wasn't. It was probably uh, probably around '97, roughly. Just don't don't cool. hold me to no, it. No, no, no. So, uh, so late and, '90s. And, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, look, it, uh, it was certainly uh, something that um, had an impact on me. Uh, Nishida Shiam was the one that graded me uh, to go down. And uh, and like getting uh, third down when you sensei title, it, it had it had an impact, had an effect because it. It meant uh, you were supposed to be something better, okay. and, and and like and, and and like all all such things, I think you grow into those shoes rather than right. actually fitting those shoes straight away. I can certainly say that uh, uh, it wasn't uh, the switch flicked, and it was and there was something different overnight. But I think you you grow into the title as you grow into a job, as you grow into position within your family. It, it's yeah. it's it's a it's it's something that you develop over a period of uh, a period of time, Pat. And I'm sure you would have found the same thing in your own training. Yeah, no, that a good reminder though. You know, to just you know appreciate more so that it's not a flick of a switch or upon it. And and for again, I guess uh, it's it's great to hear that angle because it, it it motivates. It continues. It has to motivate so many others. You know, who are potentially. Um, you know, working or striving or, or as some say, we just, just keep on, a belt is a belt, but, you know, it, it's it's also a recognition and, and, and I like that side of it and highlighting that side of it with uh, legends like yourself because you have that moment and not too many people may have shared that moment back in the 90, you know, late 90s and, and like I was sharing with Xi'an at the start of our conversation, you know, there's so many uh, great people and, and instructors and human beings that have so many good stories. But, you know, the only time I got to um, engage with Xi'an would be for maybe uh, four or five minutes at a tournament when, um, you know, luckily get a trophy and we'd shake hands and then uh, us, we'll see you next year. And, and they're the conversations I've probably had with you for, tw- you know, 15, 20 years or such, not not as in-depth as this. So, you know, in hearing this side of of your story has been fantastic because it gives, uh, people like me, I know that, you know, the history of, you know, not, it didn't just come to you. It's hard work and the passion and desire is always there. Um, no matter what title you have, eh? Look, look, that that's right. And, and the titles really aren't, aren't the big thing. I think the, um, the big thing is, is the relationships you form and the development you have, uh, out of that. I mean, it's really nice to be recognized for things and, and, and the titles are something that, um, uh, with the, uh, Senpai Kohei system that mm. we, we train under it is, is in one way very important and in another way, mm. perhaps not so important. We all put our pants on one leg at a time and there's a lot of <laughs> things we have regardless of those, uh, particular ranks and titles, but I guess it is a recognition, uh, of what we've, uh, probably survived rather than um, uh, been through. But it's it, uh, sometimes I think a title too means more to the people that are uh, expressing that yeah. than it does to you personally I, in a way because it's a sign of uh, 
the respect perhaps they have for you or well or uh, I, can, I can share from my angle it is it is the courtesy it is the courtesy and respect and it is the it is something that that uh, i love in the art and it's something that uh, from a from a sports pedigree background you know we would title our coach coach you know yeah. and, and you would have to uh you know get that um uh Again, what the best word is, you know, the, the 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 manners in appreciating what they've done and what they've been through. And I gesture it to my dojo and and to Xi'an Billy. You know, we have a, I have a big responsibility in holding the the, the flame of of Hanchi and Xi'an Billy as such from my from my lineage. And you yeah. probably got um, Sensei Alex and 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 and, Sen, and Sensei Jacob and those guys under Shin Kyuk Shin that that would see the same thing. Uh, I feel with you, you know, the the hours, the time, the commitment in holding the fort as such, um, it's a, it's a it's it's the least we could do. I I feel from that angle, you know, and coming from a different group, um, and and then seeing you and and she and David Jacobs, for example, and so forth, it is gesturing, yeah, good people, good men, good women, and uh, and keeping that tradition alive because the Koai system is what you guys went through. So what, why shouldn't, you know, why shouldn't we as well? We, we, we must keep that alive. Yeah, look, I, I understand what you're saying and, and um, it certainly has a place. And, and even for yeah. myself, if I'm uh, training with uh, or interacting with Xian Fitkin or Xian Collins, mm. as an example, even though we, we're friends, I will address them as Xian. Amazing. As, 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 a, as, as a sign of uh, respect, they're my seniors. Uh, yes. You know, they've taught me, and, and right. to me, that's the very, very least mm -hmm. I can do to show my appreciation and my respect. Yeah, very good. Uh, Xi'an, so you, uh, your dojo, so you were gesturing, it's, so 22 years, it's like you've had that, that one uh, place. Can you tell us where it is and just share with people? Where, where is it? Yeah, look, it looks, it's, it's, in, it's in a place called Haddon, which is probably 10 or 11 kilometres out of... Um, uh, Ballarat. It was. It's. A, it was a mixed blessing. I mean, it's fantastic in as much as it's. Uh, it's set up like a traditional Japanese dojo inside. The facilities are quite good and. Uh, yeah. And it's a good. Good atmosphere. Uh, I guess on the downside, because it's not so central. You know, we we don't have the students we used to have when we were in town. I remember that. Uh, the dojo I had prior to that. Uh, I had 150 students, and it was a very central uh, wow. place in town. And uh, these days we've probably got 40 students, so it's a big, <laughs> it's a big, it's a big drop in terms of uh, that, that part of it. But I've got to say, my wife and I are very happy. If I want to do yeah. maintenance, I will walk 10 meters <laughs> every morning. I'm there training, you know, at six in the morning, and it's convenient for me, and I just love it. To me, it's like going to my own little temple and yeah. charging my batteries before I start the day. I couldn't be happier. So it's, oh, I, really I think good. it's great. That's fantastic. So, how how are you? I guess um, working with your students. How meaning? Um, what's a you know a, a focus from your your way of teaching and your wife's teaching at this point? You know, do you? I'm sure we still continue the same type of um, you know 30 35 minutes of kihon and so forth. But what's something that you're starting to um, adjust or lean towards more? Or your is it you're catering for your students as such regards to the numbers or who they are is that the angle of your teaching these days look, look it is i think uh, i think when i was uh, when i started my training it was all qu uh, quantity training uh, mm. you know you could sort of um, a friday class when uh, brian senpai was taken you know you could count in between a uh, thousand and three thousand may garys and and just hit it hard you know my, my day used to start off with um that a friend of mine who was a boxer we used to do one or two thousand medicine ball sit-ups and so the whole uh, training regime was um uh, quantity based you know the more mm. the better and mm. uh, and uh you know if you passed out or, or, or some rubbish like that you're <laughs> obviously pretty weak and and need to class <laughs> up your act but the thinking back in the early days was if if a lot is good, more is better, and uh, okay. and a couple more on top of that is better still. And of course, we know better now. Uh, I think the um, uh, my students now are technically much better than I was, and they um, and they should be, you know, because uh, sure. there's been a lot of a lot of things learnt, and I've uh, 
learned a lot of things by trial and error. You know, if it didn't yeah. work for me and I got knocked out on you, that probably wasn't a good thing. So you teach, you teach in a different way. And, and we, I, my wife and I, we tend to structure what we do more for the students we have. I've uh, a lot of students that have been with me for a very long time and they're, you know, in their sixties and, and such. So you, you have a different form of training for yeah. them. There's not a lot of hot head kicks happening, but we're yeah. still very finicky in terms of our, punching technique and there's a lot of um, emphasis on street defense and also there's a personal interest uh, my part I'm, I'm interested in the energy you can get through karate through breath and uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, development for, uh, for health and um, yes uh, that type of thing in your training as well you know if, you, if you're getting older a bit you still want to be able to function and yeah. I think karate can help you there rather than hindu you dependent on your approach and then we've got younger people that want to do a lot of pad work and a lot of sparring so we cater yeah for that side of things as well because like we said earlier and i think you agree with me there we um it's for everybody not just yeah. for some you know? yeah oh well there you go i'm sure you've touched in in respect of your teaching and 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 your uh experience so many 150 students pre pre this dojo and then so on and so on so many people you would have influenced Sean and uh, I trust they all uh, get a chance to listen to this because it's been a great chat with you. And I guess we've got a couple of minutes just to, uh, you know, I guess, finish off. But um, well, firstly, you know, thank you so much for your time. And, and I guess from here on, you know, like you gestured, I, uh, I wish you all the best for your retirement as such to continue on in, in motivating and inspiring so many people. Look, thank you very much um, for the opportunity, Sensei Pat. I mean, uh, just on a personal note, it's, it's a great thing that you're doing. You're, you're sort of getting people to interact and understand uh, how, how some of us um, perhaps mm. old timers think. And uh, and it's um, it, look, it's just great to to speak to people like yourselves who've got a real passion for karate, and it makes uh, me feel very good to know that uh, mm. our future is in strong hands as well too, because it's. Uh, it's good to see the passion and the commitment still there. Shian, thanks so much for your time. For everyone out there, you know, he's uh, 10 or 12 k's out of Ballarat. So if you're ever heading down the west side of Victoria or heading through there, be sure to, uh, you know, hit up Shian Peter. He's, he's slowly getting onto the social media. That's how I found him and got him, which was great on Facebook. And um, But to uh, to the Shinkyok Shin group, uh, from a personal note, and I'm sure a couple of the fighters in our group and you know, we appreciate you guys uh, a lot in respect of, you know, the development that we've had. I know after losing some finals in, 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 the, in the past, it motivated me to keep getting better and stronger and fitter. And, um, you know, and, and they're, they're key things that, uh, you know, from a fighting angle, yes. But then also, you know, I, I was fortunate to bump into Shian David Jacobs the last week up in Bowen Heads. Um, where my family and I go on holiday just for a little break and, um, you know, such a good person and human being. I can't wait to talk to him as well. But, Shian, fantastic talking to you. All the best and uh, congratulations on your 50th year in September in Kyokushin Karate, Shin Kyokushin as well. And um, I, I wish you all the best. Very much appreciated. Thank you for the opportunity. It was, no, it was, it was fantastic.